In our panel discussion on this Monday afternoon, we touch upon the prospects of Seoul's ties with Tokyo under a new South Korean administration, as President-elect Yoon suk yeol has highlighted the importance of enhancing bilateral relations to ensure regional security and prosperity. For more, I have Professor Min Jong-hoon from the Korean National Diplomatic Academy. Welcome back, Professor Min. My pleasure. I also have Professor Sachio Nakato at Mitsumeikan University. Professor Nakato, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much for your invitation. Right. Professor Min, we'll start here then. The incoming UN administration has pledged a future-oriented approach to ties with neighboring Japan. How do you explain this stance? Yes, um, the campaign pledges of the president-elect to show that his administration um, want to build their future-oriented relationship with Japan uh, based on the correct or accurate perception of history. Right? And uh, he confirmed the pledges during the press conference, which was held right after his election victory. And uh, specifically, he said that he want to build a future-oriented relationship with Japan. And he also mentioned that um, it is important to find out what will be beneficial to both countries and their people in the future rather than in the past. And then the Japanese prime minister congratulated the president-elect on his election victory and also expressed expre uh, expectations about improving the relationships uh, between the two countries. So it seems that um, the two countries could have a better opportunity to improve their relationship in the coming years. However, considering that there have been big gaps uh, in the two countries' positions of uh, historical and territorial issues, such as uh, wartime, forced labor, and combat women issues, uh, Japan's climbs on Dr. Island, the Japan's push for the UNESCO heritage designation of South Mine, and the Japan's history textbook issues, and others. So we need to see how they will be able to narrow down such a big gaps in the coming months and years. Pretty tough top questions. Right, they are, they are. Professor Nakata, some pundits have praised the shift in stance by the incoming conservative administration here in South Korea, calling it timely as the world currently ho faces a host of geopolitical concerns, including an assertive China and an aggressive Russia. Speaking within your capacity as a scholar, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think that's a good for Japan, actually. Uh, uh, considering the uh, statement by uh, President-elect Yoon, as well as uh, policy advisor to you, Mr. Yoon, they emphasize the importance of us alk alliance, as well as us alk japan trade cooperation, and including uh, japan alk uh, cooperation, or even over security issues. It might be good for Japan to deal with all these problems. And actually, if Japan and South Korea establish uh, cooperation, a promote cooperation, that would be uh, very uh, beneficial for both of the country to deal with such uh, geostrategic uh, issues. Right. Professor Nakato, then, beyond your personal thoughts, what has been the response, general response, over in Japan to President elect Yoon suk yeol's calls for a boost in bilateral ties? Okay, uh, in Japan, generally speaking, the, uh, the attitude of uh, President elect uh, uh, Yoon is accepted as positive. Uh, I hate to say, uh, but like general understanding of uh, uh, the Moon administration. It's not that positive, as you know. Uh, many people consider that the Moon administration is more like a pro North Korea, pro China, and anti Japan. I do not think that that is the case, but that is more like a typical understanding in Japan, too. But it's, it's probably the same in South Korea as well. The image of Prime Minister Abe was really, really negative in South Korea. So, in that sense, many people actually expect it's a good opportunity for Japan and the ROK to change the course of bilateral relations. In that sense, uh, overall, uh, Japanese uh, people, uh, including experts, they think that the birth of uh, coming conservative government is welcome. Right. Now, Professor Min, as you mentioned, the need to improve ties has been well acknowledged by both President-elect Yoon suk yeol and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. But I'm sure you'll agree, as you mentioned earlier as well, that history continues to haunt these two mm -hmm. countries. Could you elaborate further on that? Yeah, well, um, basically, if you look around, we can easily see that the neighboring countries tend to have the historical issues like the, the France and Germany and India and Pakistan. 
So this shows that South Korea-Japan relationship is not an exception in historical disputes between neighboring countries. And the, regarding the um, historical and territorial issues uh, between South Korea and Japan, as I mentioned a moment ago, the two countries have got different perceptions and positions over the issues. And as you know, these issues are long-lasting and they have been taken advantage of politically in both countries. And in addition, whenever uh, these the historical issues emerge, um, that they have got emotional responses from people in both countries, especially in South Korea. Now, it is mainly because they have got victims and remind them of the painful memories. So it would be very difficult for these historical issues to be resolved completely in the short term. And it means that these historical issues continue to be there around the bilateral, bilateral relationships between South Korea and Japan for some time. So I think that the two countries need to take uh, the practical approach that they will focus on the, uh, the enhancing their cooperation in security, economy, and cultural exchanges while they will just try to the manage their historical their, the issues in the short term. Right. And Professor Nakata, conflict over history has been reignited in recent days following news of recent changes, that is, in the content of history as well as geography textbooks to be used by Japanese high schools in the near future. Would you like to tell us a bit about these recent changes? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, probably this is more like the Japanese perspective. Japan has now changed its position uh, regarding the question of sovereignty of uh, Tokto or Takesuma in Japanese. But as you know, uh, the Japanese government actually rejected the protest or demand from Korea regarding the history and geography textbook. So maybe one could uh, arguably claim that maybe the current uh, uh, position of the Japanese government uh, including the Kishida administration, is reflected in this uh, decision. But uh, there are some slight change uh, over worrying about the comfort movement issue as well as uh, wartime forced labor uh, uh, problems. But actually, the content is basically the same. The Japan has uh, consistently uh, maintained the same position. Uh, but the question of the uh, uh, Tokto issue, for example, uh, this is more like a question in Japan of uh, uh, geo, uh, no, uh, territorial issues, uh, not much consideration of uh, uh, history issues, unfortunately. But on the other hand, as you know, uh, Takis, uh, no, Tokto is a symbol of Japanese imperialism. Uh, such kind of perception gap, uh, gap of uh, the uh, issue is uh, continue to be a problem between the two countries. Uh, Right, it is. And Professor Min, I understand this next question will be quite tough, but do, what do you propose then to perhaps better bridge the gap between Seoul and Tokyo with regard to the differences over historical matters? The first, uh, I think that it is necessary for the two countries and governments uh, to be agreed that they want to work together uh, for the, the future-oriented relationships uh, between the two countries. But the, as I mentioned earlier today, it would be very difficult uh, for the historical issues to be fully resolved in the short term. So I think it would be practical again to employ the two-track approach, the, which means that the two countries um, the, will focus on improving the, uh, the cooperation in areas where it would be relatively easy for them to work together like uh, security and economy. And uh, those areas have the same interests for the two countries in terms of the, the stably maintaining the, the secret situation you know, on the Korean Peninsula and the East Asian region. And uh, while they will try to, try to manage the historical issues and try to resolve the, them in the long, long term, so uh, historical issues will be tough. Ha has it been tough? The, it's tough and will be tough in the long term. So, and to do that, I think, first, the two leaders in South Korea and Japan needed to meet in person and to show in public that they will work together uh, to build a future-oriented relationship between the two countries. The leader level, so the first leader level movement would be very important to break through, to make the breakthrough in terms of the, uh, the relationship between the two countries. 
And it could be of the meaning for political gesture for improving the bilateral relations between the two countries. And then they could revitalize diplomatic efforts to facilitate their cooperation and manage the historical issues. But the other regarding the meeting of, potential meeting of the two leaders, I think it could take some time before they actually met. It's mainly because uh, the, the upper house election in Japan will be held in July this year, and it is likely that the Japanese government will maintain its hardline stance against South Korea in order to mobilize conservative voters in the election. So it will take some time before we can see some kind of the actual the progress. Anyway, we need to see what will actually happen we'll in the government. We have to wait and see that. Yes. Professor Nakato, as Professor Min has mentioned, beyond their differences, South Korea and Japan share mutual interests with regard to regional security and economic prosperity. Now, that being said, what look to be the immediate bilateral gains, the favorable ties between these two countries? Okay, obviously, one thing Japan and South Korea can cooperate is North Korean issues. So uh, Japan has been uh, proposing the cooperation among the United States, ROK, and Japan. And also, uh, Japan was unfortunately suspicious about the intention of the Moon administration uh, promoting like trilateral cooperation among the three countries. So on that sense, uh, probably the boss of conservative government in South Korea would uh, give both countries to promote trilateral cooperation as well as emphasizing bilateral alliance with the United States, uh, both Japanese side and also South Korean side. And also on the question of history issues related to like reg uh, security cooperation, I uh, totally agree with Professor Ami mentioned. Uh, it's probably a good idea to adapt to track approach uh, to pass it for both countries. Uh, to deal with uh, security issues, economic issues, and also uh, history issues in different way. But unfortunately, we, if we look at the past experience, uh, in case uh, during the Park uh, Korean administration, uh, it was not successful uh, to separate history issues and other uh, uh, issues. And during the Moon administration, yes, uh, President Moon tried to adapt to track approach. And uh, at that time, on the other hand, Japan has adapted the linkage policy, so not to differentiate history issues and security issues. So uh, the problem of history issues actually influence the trust between the two countries, and also uh, that also influence uh, the cooperation level of security issues between the two countries. So again, this is a very difficult question, but at the same time, we have to pursue uh, two-track approach as well as uh, dealing with each issue in parallel. Right. Professor Min, President elect Yoon Seo Gyal has also vowed to boost Korea's strategic mm. alliance with the U.S. to ensure peace and stability within the Korean Peninsula and elsewhere. This is something that Professor Nakato also spoke about. Having said that, do you suppose Washington may perhaps seek to play a more active role in promoting ties between Seoul and Tokyo as it seeks perhaps a tougher stand or regional stand against mm. an assertive China and perhaps Pyongyang's provocations? Yes, I think so. Uh, the first regarding the South Korea-U.S. Uh, relations, I think that the next uh, South Korean government is likely to strengthen the RK-U.S. alliance. And uh, it will be more clear and uh, consistent in its overall the, the positions between U.S. and China. And uh, specifically, the campaign pledges of the president-elect show that um, his administration will reconstruct the RK-U.S. alliance and the strengthen the comprehensive strategic relationship with Washington by sharing the core value of democracy, market economy, and human rights. And the regarding um, its uh, diplomatic uh, directions, the next uh, South Korean government is likely to solidify South Korea's status as a global pivotal country to contribute to peace, freedom, and prosperity. So I think these policy orientations of, of South Korea will be welcomed by Washington. As you know, the Biden administration want to work together with its allies and partners to track the rise of China. And South Korea and Japan are its key regional allies um, to stand against Beijing's assertive the, the attitude and Pyongyang's provocations. So it means that the trilateral cooperation among South Korea, U.S., and Japan will be very important for U.S. to 
maintain its influence in East Asia. So I expect that Washington will play a more active role in promoting the relationships between Seoul and Tokyo. And I also think that we will be able to see more trilateral meetings and dialogues among the three countries in the coming months and years. Right, hopefully that will be the case. <laughs> Professor Nakata, on the topic of uh, regional uh, stability and security, there is much speculation here about further displays of defiance by North Korea, including perhaps a nuclear test later this week. Now, what do you believe would be an appropriate regional response? Okay, uh, first of all, we may have to think about why North Korea is adapting or accelerating its military activities, including uh, missile launches recently and possibly a nuclear test in the coming future. Uh, probably uh, they uh, consider that regional response is from North Korea. They miss North Koreans. Uh, they consider that the regional response to North Korea is actually. Uh, pressing North Korea and criticizing North Korea in their wording, a hostile policy to, to our North Korea. So we have to uh, explore the opportunity to have dialogue with North Korea. That's the first thing we have to uh, pursue. And on the other hand, uh, if North Korea conducts a nuclear test, we also have to send a clear message that uh, nuclear tests are not acceptable. And the international society also needs to send a clear message. That is not acceptable at all. But uh, unfortunately, if we adapt, for example, our economic sanctions uh, through United Nations Security Council resolution, it probably promotes a faster North Korea's provocation in the future. Right. And keeping in mind the concerns raised by Professor Nakato then, Professor Min, what are your words of advice to the incoming administration with regard to its foreign policy in general? Well, it's a tough question, <laughs> but yeah, the, I want to uh, talk about the yeah, South Korea's positions between the U.S. and China. Uh, basically, I think that um, the, the next the South Korean government needed to preserve its strategic autonomy um, the, in its relations with the U.S. and China. Uh, it's mainly because uh, the South Korea's the foreign policy needed to be based on its own national interests which shows that South Korea should maintain good relationships with both U.S. and China. But as I mentioned several times in today's program, you know, it is expected that the next South Korean government that will emphasize strengthening the RK-U.S. alliance and the, uh, the, uh, the uh, and uh, the, 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 the strengthening the, its uh, comprehensive strategic the relationship with Washington. So it is likely that um, the, the next the South Korean government will get closer to U.S. than China in its overall positions uh, between the, the U.S. and China or the two countries. Meanwhile, the, I have to point out that it is also important for South Korea or the, the next the South Korean government to maintain a good relationship with China. As you know, China is the number one trading partner of South Korea, and I don't think that such a situation will change in the coming years. There, there will be no country that could ex the replace the China for that purpose. And uh, the China is also important to deal with the North Korean problems. So these situations show that China is a very important neighbor and partner of South Korea. So as in the campaign pledges of the president-elect, um, I expect that the next South Korean government will try to uh, maintain a good relationship with China with mutual respect. So taken together, I hope that um, the next South Korean government um, will maintain good or favorable relationships with both U.S. and China, although, although it will likely put more strategic consideration on the U.S. side in relation to U.S.-China strategic competition. Right. And Professor Dakata, would you like to share your prospects on the future course of bilateral ties under the UN administration here in South Korea and the Kishida administration there in Japan? Well, uh, I really hope that while well, the UN administration and Kishida administration can improve bilateral relations. Uh, in order for the two countries to promote uh, better, uh, better cooperation in the future. Uh, first of all, Japan has to take one step further to deal with history issue. That's no question about that. Uh, the history textbook issue, the timing was not very good. 
since uh, the president-elect Yoon showed a positive uh, attitude to deal with the bilateral relations between the two countries, but uh, the timing of a history issue, a history textbook was obviously considered negative in South Korea. Uh, at the same time, uh, we have to think about the, uh, uh, the uh, coming uh, upper house election in Japan in July. Uh, if the Kishida administration win the election, probably it's a good opportunity for the Kishida administration to consolidate its po uh, pol political ba uh, power base. That is also promote uh, the good opportunity for the Kishida administration to uh, uh, enhance uh, bilateral relations. So in that sense, uh, there are uh, plenty of opportunity for both countries to improve bilateral relations. That's what I expected. Right, Professor Nakata, that is good to know, and hopefully that will be the case in the near future. Mm. All right, then, thank you mm. very much for your time and your thoughts. And Professor Min here in the studio, thank you for your insights thank today. Thank you.